Today we're going to look at two easy times tables, the 5 times table and the 11 times table. Now obviously the one way to learn your 5 times table and your 11 times table is to do just a huge amount of practice on it and that we will be doing. But something that can help us a little bit is if we start to notice patterns in the times tables and this makes it easier for us to learn them. So I want you to have a look at this five times table that we've got in front of you here and just see if you can see any patterns in it. Pause the video now and tell me what you can see. Did you notice that all your multiples of five either end in a five or they end in a zero? And that means it's quite easy to check if you're doing the right thing with your five times table, because you know it must end in a five or a zero. But it also helps us to answer some other questions. Let's have a look. What if I was faced with these two questions? Someone asks me, is 342 a multiple of five? Now, if I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and carry on and on and on and see if I can get to 342, that's going to take me an enormously long time. But if I look carefully and I see that ends in a two, and I saw in my five times table, that any multiple of 5 ends in a 0 or a 5, I can immediately give the answer here, no, because it doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. And similarly, doesn't matter how huge the number I get, if, for example, I give you the number 4,503,217 and I ask you to divide it by 5 and I say, well, I get a remainder. Well, I don't need to do the division to tell me that answer. I have a look here and I see that that final answer, the final digit is a 7. And I know that in my 5 times table, I only end in zeros or fives, so I know that this won't divide exactly by five. I will get a remainder. So the answer is yes, I will get a remainder because the number ends in a seven. So very easy to tell if something's a multiple of 5, it must end in a 0 or a 5. Let's look at the 11 times table now and see what patterns we have there. If you have a look at the 11 times table, you'll see for the first 9 it's all very simple, right? If you've got 5 times 11, it's just 5, 5, 55. 7 times 11 is just 7, 7, 77, and so on and so on. So those are very easy. It gets a little trickier over here. And so we'd like to think a bit about how to do it. And we'd like to be able to have some way of doing it that would also be able make it easy for us to work out what something like 14 times 11 is, for example. So let's just have a little look. If we think, for example, of what 11 multiplied by 3 means, this will help us to see why we get our simple and easy answer of 3, 3, 33. Well, 11 times 3 just means that we have got 11 threes. If we have got 11 threes, you should be easily able to see we've got 10 threes plus one more three. 10 threes are 30. One more three is three more. And so we get our answer of 33. 11 times 5 would be 11 fives. So we've got 10 fives, which is 50, plus one more 5, which will give us our 55. And this makes it easy, for example, to work out what 11 times 12 would be. If we've got 11 lots of 12, that means we've got 10 12s plus one more 12. Well, 10 12s are 120. One more 12 is 12. So we add on that extra 12 and we get 132. 
See if you can use the same idea to work out what 14 times 11 would be. Pause the video and try it now, and then we'll check our answer together. Fourteen times eleven. Fourteen times eleven is just eleven lots of fourteen. And as we saw before, if we've got eleven fourteens, it's the same as saying we have got ten fourteens and one more fourteen. Well, ten fourteens are a hundred and forty. One more fourteen, just fourteen added on. And we can easily get that 11 14s are 154.